Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube video on stacking Comet images. There's been some absolutely wonderful images of uh, Comet Neowise being shown on the internet at the moment. Some I've taken as well. So I thought I'd share a little tip that helps you get the best out of your images. And it's something that not many people really think about when they're taking their Comet images. So I thought I'd show you a couple of my images first. Here's one taken uh, just over a week ago on a Friday night, Saturday morning, when we had Comet Neowise, which by this time is looking really, really bright in the sky. And then we had this absolutely fantastic display of noctilus and clouds as well. So that's a night I'm going to remember for a long, long time. So here's another one showing this funny shadow in uh, the tail of the comet, fairly close to the nucleus. It's a little bit of a out of focus image but uh, you know it shows you what you can capture just by using the camera and the tripod and of course you can also really short exposures you can get the comet you can see the tail and you get some nice cloud effects as well so you know just using the camera and tripod you can get effects like that but to get real detail you need to stack images and this is where the art is so here's a picture that's been stacked of a number of images. You can see the nucleus, which is the, uh, well, it's a pseudo nucleus. The actual solid bit in the middle is so small we can't see it on the scale. So you can see all this bright material around it and this shadow extending away in the tail. And of course, that's revealed by stacking images. And if we stack a number of images, uh, get some really good subs, you can see the dust tail curving quite nicely due to the movement of the comet in its orbit because they're large particles they lag behind so that they get this curve but the ion tail which is made of gas which are these ones here these streamers are really really active and they're really really fast so they move really fast because they're made up of lighter materials like gas and iron ions uh, and so they move really really quickly and that's where the problem lies with comets when you're stacking images. Here's another one I took. You can see these lovely striations in the comet. And you can see these streamers in the ion tail as well. And that red color, which I still haven't found a definitive answer as to why that's red. Some people say it's sodium, but other people are saying, well, it's not. And other people are saying it's in hydrogen from the water that's in the comet, but other people say it's not. So that's the debate I'm following keenly at the moment to find out exactly what it is I've captured in my images. That's why I love astronomy. You never know what you're going to see. So here's another short exposure. You can see the tail curving quite nicely. And you can see this ion tail, the straight one, really well. And you see the clouds of uh, trail as I've taken the picture. And here's a stacked image. Not a brilliant one, but I was fighting clouds at the time. And this is much wider view. And you can see the tail curving away with this fork, a bit like a red kite's forked tail. Here and the ion tail stretching out really, really nicely. And some people are saying it's up to 15 degrees, but I don't have dark enough skies here to be able to see that extent or even image that extent. So, uh, you know, I have to make do with what I can. Here's another one taken a little bit closer in. You can see the ion tail quite nicely and the dust tail with this fork built in as well. And of course, the coma is really overexposed in this image. So, here's a couple of images. So here's a static image showing uh, some structure in the ion tail and the striations in the uh, dust tail. But look what's happening. I've made a movie of some of my images and you can see that the material in this ion tail is moving. Because the tail is formed by the solar wind actually pushing against the material and forcing it away from the comet. So you can see it's moving in this animation over a period of time. And that, that I guess, is about 20 minutes um, duration for that video. And you can see that material moving up the tail. And that's where the problem lies. Anything that's moving in your image will smear. OK, so you're going to lose detail if you stack too many images. Again, here's another one, and you can see that it's quite a number of images are stacked, so it's smeared out the detail a little bit. You can see the striations, you can see a little bit of structure, but you can't see real detail in there because there's a few too many subs been added together. I use Deep Sky Stacker for my stacking, and within Deep Sky Stacker, you can actually tell it the position of the comet, and then you can tell it to actually stack on the comet and not the stars. So that locks the comet in position so that 
details in the comet should come into view and the stars will trail. And what you'd normally do if you're doing deep sky objects, you would normally select all your images here, tick them, and then you'd have to go through one by one and mark where the comet is in each of the images. And then once you've done that, you make sure they're all ticked and then you click stack check pictures and you get an image. Now that's all very well if you're using deep, doing deep sky objects. But if you're doing a comet, remember this material is moving. So if you take too many subs and stack too many subs together, you are going to smear that detail if you stack too many images. So here we are. So here's uh, about 30 images stacked. And you can see, yes, you can see some detail in that eye on tail. You can see the striations in the comet, in the dust tail. But it's not really clear and distinct. If you cut that down a bit and stack a bit less, you can see there's a little bit more structure in there. And this is about 20 subs stacked together. All, the, all from the same subs. But these more subs, you can see the trailing of the star trails is much longer, which shows that you've uh, stacked many more images. This one's a lot shorter, and you can see that the star trails are much shorter. But if you stack, just five subs. This is 10, this was five. And you can see the star trials are much shorter, which gives a little bit more of a pleasing view. But look at the structure within the eye on tail. It's starting to appear a little bit sharper, a little bit more distinct because we're using less subs. That material hasn't had a chance to smear over the time the images were taken. So it's remaining sharper. So it stays in view. So here we go. So let's have a look. And you can see there's an animation I took of this material moving up the tail. So there's a single sub. And you can see this material is moving up the tail. So if you were to stack all those images together, that would smear the detail. So you'd lose it. OK. So you can see just how active comets are. And that's why we have to be careful with how many subs we stack. So once you've got the comet position in each of your images just select five or six depending on how long you've taken i've done one minute exposures so i've selected six here and i've stacked them together and that's reasonably okay if you did more than that it would start to smear because the material would have moved too far between each exposure from the first exposure to the last exposure and so reduce the number of subs that you stack to try and retain that detail so i went for eight, iso 800 and I did one minute subs and that was tracked using uh, a little mount so that it was keeping track with the comet. It wasn't auto guided. It was just, you know, it was just following the sky and it would have had periodic errors and all sorts of things. But with a one minute exposure and at the scale I was taking the images, you probably wouldn't notice that in the uh, images anyway. If you don't know how to use Deep Sky Stacker, then I do have a guide to Deep Sky Stacker available on my website star-gazing.co.uk so go there and you can order that guide on how to use deep sky stacker and how to stack on the comet nucleus itself to make sure that your comet stays in sharp focus so here's where the comet was a few days ago this was it on the 17th of july when it had just moved out of Lynx into the constellation of ursa major so there's the uh, seven stars of the plow the saucepan with a bent handle and here's the rest of the great bear so here's the head here are the front paws and here are the back paws of the bear on the 23rd of july the comet's going to be at its closest to earth but it has started to fade so get out there now while it's still fairly bright because it will fade fairly quickly especially once it passes the 23rd of july so it will be bigger but it will probably be fainter because it is fading by the 27th of July, it'll be right in the back paws of the bear. And then on the 31st of July, right at the end of this month, it's going to be down amongst the constellation of Coma Berenices down there. So it's going to be fainter. So, you know, now is the time to get out there, go out and have a look because it is distinctly fainter than it was a few days ago. So uh, make sure you get out there as soon as possible 
if the clear skies let you out to view it. So this is the path the comet's going to be following. So uh, it's about at its highest now, just after it gets dark in the evening sky. Um, so evening skies are now favoured a bit better than the morning sky, but it is visible all night because it's so high up, it actually doesn't set. So by about midnight, one o'clock, it's almost below Polaris in the northern sky. So you need to have a fairly low northwestern horizon after sunset and a northern horizon throughout the uh, night to keep track of the comet. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it found it helpful. I'm happy for people to send me uh, questions or anything about it. If you have found this vid video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to me and hope to see you all online soon.